you so much, Chef, and it's a real pleasure and an honor to be with you this afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to, to come back and see so many of my business associates and friends and also to be with the good folks up here on the dais. I consider it a privilege to serve with Bobby and Rob and Randy in service to our country. Um, we're here today because we are free people, and that freedom's come at a heavy price. And I just want to take out of my short time here the opportunity to thank our veterans. And we stand with our Gold Star families, those families who have lost a loved one in service to our country. Second Congressional District has the highest concentration of men and women in uniform in the country. And we've had a disproportionate loss in fighting for our freedom. You know, I see my good friends and colleagues, including the president of our, our company, James Church, in the back, and I rarely talk about our business, but I think Chef gave me a little bit of opening there. But to go from a showroom floor to the house floor, it's been a remarkable journey, and a good one and a challenging one. But I sought this office not to have a little pell pen, but because our country is at great risk. And I'm seeking to advance four principal goals. There's others, but here are the four main ones. And I just want to give you kind of a quick report card here. First one is job creation. I can't tell you how many meetings I've been to this, like this one. It's a wonderful meeting that for 20 plus years at all these business meetings, they've got to diversify our economy. Well, look, we passed a really good solid legislation that opens up a coastal Virginia energy in an environmentally responsible way. And we had uh, such good uh, success here working with the local uh, uh, fellow members of Congress here, working together to protect our military. Uh, we worked together to stop the, the mold that was giving our young enlisted sailors and Marines substandard housing. We've come together uh, as a team and we worked uh, to pass the bill just last week, Chinese drywall. Bobby was with me, Rob was with me, and, and Randy was with me. Folks have been hurting so much here because of their, their homes are uninhabitable because of this defective drywall that's come from China. So there are some successes here. There are some bipartisan successes that I wanted to share that with you today. Well, the second one, aside from job creation, is, is reducing federal spending. Look, I'm a businessman. This is who you sent to Washington. I go where the numbers lead me. And our country is at tremendous and increasing risk because of our fiscal trajectory. There's not a, an individual, there's not a family, there's not a business, there's not a country as great as we are that can stay on this path borrowing 40 cents on every dollar. The music stops. Our standard of living is going to be severely uh, impacted in a most adverse way. So I'm on a mission, and I trust you are as well, to do the right thing there and reduce federal spending in a responsible way and get our economy going again so the revenues come up and we, we avert this this rendezvous that we're on right now with a, really, with a really tough situation. The third one is defending our military. Uh, as son of a Iwo Jima Marine, what a, a great passion and uh, privilege it is to, to serve and represent this wonderful district. And we, as I mentioned, we uh, were successful in stopping the, the mold uh, that has been hurting our young men and women in uniform here from their housing and also really pushing back against this, this effort to increase TRICARE which to me is a breach of trust with our men and women in uniform. And the fourth one is this, the fourth goal that I've really been moving forward and feel good about what we've been able to accomplish here in the last 20 plus months is this, is changing Congress rather than having Congress change me. I know that's a bold and audacious uh, thing to, to, to push up against, but I believe that's, that's critical. We've got to change the institution itself and it starts with individual members of Congress leading by example. And I've tried to have done that. Um, in the district and in our home and at every opportunity, including here on the House floor, I'm seeking to advance the ideas that I think are best for our country with a degree and a high measure of civility, going where the facts lead me. If they reinforce a long tail view, terrific. If they cause me to pivot a bit because we've got good data, we need to do that. And then third, not questioning the motives of those with whom we disagree. And as Randy alluded to and rightly, I think, concluded with, this pursuit of common ground, it doesn't mean we stand in a circle and sing kumbaya and sway back and forth. I'm not talking about that. We've had a spirited debate since the very foundation of this country, and that will continue. That's a good thing. But we must be passionate uh, about finding common ground 
because this is the way, and indeed the only way, that we'll meet the deep obligation that we have to the next generation of Americans. I ask you to join me on that, that uh, worthy journey. Thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Raise your hand, have a question. Tell us who you'd like, or tell us a question, and if you have a particular person you'd like to point to, do that, otherwise I will sign it. Um, here we go. First, question. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you uh, all for this opportunity. I just had a question. As a business person, when um, we are challenged with how we make ends meet, one of the first things we do is to look at staff. And in order to um, get back in line, a lot of times jobs are going to be lost because we need to we need those dollars. So I've been listening and hearing that uh, we want to make cuts on one end, and on the other part, we said we want to grow. And I know, for example, that with the government, a lot of jobs have been created through government. So in order to reduce spending, most of the time you're going to have to cut jobs. And if you're going to cut jobs, then how are you going to accomplish what everyone keeps saying about uh, job growth? Anyway. Anyway. Who love that question? <laughs> I'll take a shot at it. The, uh, we really do have to, to grow our economy. Um, you know, when I talk about common ground, I have been on the House floor and I had a, a colleague um, who holds a different view than mine, and he said, you know, there's no evidence that uh, regulations inhibit job creation. In fact, there's evidence that uh, regulations create jobs. Now, when I hear something like that, that is not common ground. Uh, when I hear, you know, we can wisely uh, roll back regulations on the EPA that have really hurt our ability to grow jobs, but at the same time, we our obligation to leave our children with clean air and clean water and clean soil. That's a common value. You know, that can be done. And I think that's reflected in the 30-plus job bills that we've passed that now sit on uh, Senator Reid's desk. That's not a partisan statement, just a statement of fact. I think the principal way that we can grow our economy, one of the principal ways, is, is moving America toward energy independence. We have been blessed with enormous natural resources here uh, of every type, including the coastal Virginia energy that I mentioned, and that would produce and create 18,000 local jobs. These are good paying jobs that, that are really life changing, every one of them. And I'm a Republican that says we need more revenue. It's principally through growing our economy and reforming our tax code. But see, this is the revenue that we need locally to pay our teachers better, our first responders better, and to help get us out of this terrible economic fix that we're in. But when you choke out the life of the entrepreneur, the greatest job producing engine the world's ever known, then we wonder why we don't have more tax revenue when our economy stalled. It's pretty clear to me as an entrepreneur. Uh, turn public servant what's going on here. We're choking out the life of the entrepreneur. We're, we're not giving the right environment for people to put precious and limited capital to uh, in, in investing that and growing and growing our economy. So it's principally through growing uh, our economy uh, through energy independence and other ways and, and really just holding the line on expenses. There's not a whole lot of talk about actually cutting expenses. More often than what you're hearing here is actually cutting the rate of growth. And that's not enough in some cases. Thanks, Joe.